In this video, we're going to discuss the materials used in the production of serpentine belts, how it's changed in the last 15 years, and the effects of the material changes. Hi everyone, my name is David Hershorn and I'm the Director of Brand Management for the ContiTech line here at CRP Automotive. As many of you already know, CRP Automotive is the company that's brought you ContiTech belts since the days when every import shop needed a 9.5 by 905 fan belt in their inventory for air-cooled Volkswagens. When the industry moved from using fan belts to multi-rib belts, the designs changed but there wasn't a huge upgrade in material. In an engine bay, the chemicals, heat, and forces a belt comes in contact with would cause it to crack over time, which led us all to check the number of cracks on the belt to tell whether it was okay to keep in service or if it was time to change it out. These days, vehicle and belt manufacturers have all but abandoned neoprene for serpentine belts, instead opting for EPDM rubber. A big reason for that change is that EPDM has a broader temp range than neoprene. Depending on the specific composition, EPDM's operating range goes from negative 40 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, and neoprene goes from negative 40 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. This broader temperature range doesn't represent an exponential difference between neoprene and EPDM, but over the lifetime of the belt, EPDM's ability to operate in a wider temperature range makes a big difference. Also, EPDM stands up much better to ozone and oxidizers at high temperatures. Over time, ozone and oxidizers in the air attack rubber and lead to what's known as ozone cracking or dry rotting. The most common example of this would be cracks that can be seen on the sidewalls of an old tire. Due to these and other reasons, EPDM is far superior in a serpentine belt application than neoprene was. Rather than seeing belts last 40 to 50,000 miles, we're seeing them go as many as 100,000 miles before they need to be taken out of service. When it comes time to inspect a serpentine belt that's made of EPDM, the process is different than it was with a neoprene belt. On the neoprene belts, checking for cracks was the most used procedure to check the belt. But on belts made of EPDM, the telltale cracks won't be present. EPDM belts wear out over time. Due to the friction of the environment, some of the rubber wears off, much like tread on a tire, which leads to a lack of contact area and friction between the belt and the pulleys. We recommend using a tool like this one to check the teeth. If the teeth of the belt match up perfectly with the teeth on the tool, the belt is fine. But if you can see light between the belt and the teeth, the rubber is worn and the belt should be replaced. During a belt inspection, it's very important to check the condition of all the accessories driven by the belt as well as the idlers and tensioners. Since this inspection is now happening closer to 100,000 miles rather than 50,000 miles, it's a very good idea to remove any components that are showing signs of wear and not expected to last long enough to make it to the next belt change. If you run into a case like this, make sure you check out our accessory drive kits. These kits contain all the belts, idlers, and tensioners for the application, and the components are all coming from OEM suppliers, so you can feel confident that you're giving your customer the best service possible. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos, and for more information on any CRP product, please visit our website at crpautomotive.com.